Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Come on in. It's early this morning. Shh. The kids are still sleeping. We're into day three of fall vacation. And uh, kids have been sleeping till almost noon. I know. I know. There are chores to do. They're not going to do them. <laughs> it's fall break. It's more about sleeping in, enjoying crisp evenings, staying up late, decorating. We plugged in some little candy corn lights in our front window last night. Very cute. Orange, yellow, white. Riley, come say hi. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? Say hi. Say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, I have some crochet items. The kids, you know, they've taken up quite a bit of time being home. But I did get some stuff done. I'll show it to you. That's some good coffee. Actually, I'm surprised Nola didn't wake up. The house smells really good, like brewed coffee. That's usually her alarm clock. Okay, go lay down. Go lay down. I want to talk to my friends. Go lay down. I have a request for a fall colored pillow cover. And I've had this tutorial from Bag O'Day in the back of my mind for quite a while now. I think it'd be beautiful for fall. I think it's called um, Falling Leaves. I'll show you. Crystal does an amazing job. It looks really detailed and complicated, not the way she explains it. So it's a 21 by 21 inch pillow that I'm covering. Um, I did this block 19 inches by 19 inches. It's going to be 19 inches by 19 inches. I've got um, fall colors, dropping leaves. They're going to go this way. And then I'm going to make a border across the top. And I have some wooden, I have about six wooden buttons to help close it. So this will be one side. With the same colors on the other side, I was planning on making some granny squares, maybe one large, and then on down one side and across the bottom making smaller squares in the same colors so that I could have some solid backgrounds for doing some applique work. I thought I'd make a little cup of tea and maybe some on the big one and then some fall leaves on the smaller squares going around. I did write out a little pattern to help keep track of what, whoop, help keep track of what I'm doing, hook size and all that good stuff. Um, keeps my row count, keeps my numbers in mind, a little scrap piece of paper. So I'm working on that. I also have a a green to add. What color green is this? Just green. This beautiful color green and they couldn't think of a a fall or a or an army color or some good name for it. A jungle green. Uh, forest moss. Come on Premier. I could help you out. <laughs> so you did that. I used those. I'm working on that. I'm going to stack that behind you, friend. Don't worry about that. And then, Lily's made a new friend at her new school. And the new friend's mom is awesome. And um, Lily gave her a pretty big compliment. She said that, uh, that the friend's mom is very easy to talk to. And for a preteen to say that about another adult, I'm extremely appreciative. Our teens need as many responsible adults as possible. And I want to send her an extra thank you. And what do I do? I like to crochet. So <laughs> she told me her favorite color was green. And I looked through all my yarns. And I found a Premier Alpaca. 
Appalachia. I'm sorry. It has 10% alpaca in it. And it's got these dark greens marled with white. It goes into this lime green. Super fun. Soft. Incredibly soft yarn. This is going to be a hug. <laughs> and I used my... Uh, my ruby baby pattern for the keyhole scarf and I made a special something. Buns in with the biggest tassel I could figure out. How is that? Oh, it feels so luxurious. It's not just a scarf. It's tuna. Come on, kitty cat. We're recording. I have company. I need to let the tuna in the room. But I will not be cold in doing it. I'll be right back. Come on, tuna. Come on. Welcome. Come on in. You heard I had company, huh? Well, come say hi. This is my scarf to gift. I need to make sure that every little tidbit of animal pet hair is off. I try very hard to pick out the hairs as I'm working and I definitely make sure they're very clean before I gift. I think if I fold this one down on the inside first, then this one will be, let's flip it over. Let's see, left-handed, right-handed, oh! That lays so much nicer. Look at those ripples. That is nice. Look, he likes it. <laughs> so that's one scarf that I made, the keyhole scarf. And then, do you remember my mystery cake of yarn that I got in the $5 mystery bag from, from Michaels? Well, I decided that loving Ruby Baby's pattern, it would be awesome for a campfire s'more scarf. I'd love to share it with you. I made, let's see, let's put it on so that the ripples, the ripples flow in. There we go. Oy. Look at that. It's s'mores. It's this off-white marshmallowy fluff. We got the milk chocolate, dark chocolate lovers. We've got it down the middle. We've got this graham cracker. Oh, it's beautiful. Whoop, skeletons on this side. Enjoying the party. <laughs> I have this one. I'm gonna tuck this scarf away and I'm sure at some point there will be somebody to ask if I can make them one or if I'll find someone to gift it to. It's always nice to have something in your, your little treasure chest to share with other people. And that's what I've been working on. Um, so I'm gonna finish up my pillowcase cover this week. I found a new doily pattern it's a pumpkin doily. It's very lacy, silhouettes of a pumpkin. Um, I could use my DMC and Lydia's thread and make a small one. I think I do have some pumpkin-y orange colors I could use for that. And I also have some oh <laughs> cotton lily and cream. I think I'm mixing up two different types of cotton. I know. I do that all the time. I Tuna, come on. Come say hi. You need to say hi this morning. And I have some um, just cotton from Dollar Tree. I could use that. Um, I definitely got a marled orange and white with that. And I got a beautiful green one. It would look more like a gourd. But it's very open work, lacy. Um, it does the bulbous curves around the side. The pattern has some, some curly vines and a nice big leaf on the top. 
and I was a little worried about stiffening it so that it actually stands up like a fresh pumpkin and not a smashed November pumpkin. <laughs> a useful tip, they stuffed their pumpkin with tulle. And I did notice at the store the other day that they had some orange glittery tulle and Dollar Tree had some black glittery tool that would look really pretty inside of a pumpkin. So I'm going to work on those two things this week. And I think that's it. Oh, no, there was one more Halloween decoration I found last night at about midnight on Ravelry. It's um, the Wizard of Oz, the red ruby slippers, and the black and white stockings. I have some bulky weight yarn in red, black, and white, and I'm gonna make them to go on the garage door for trick-or-treaters to adore. <laughs> well, I have some projects to go work on, and my house is waking up. Thank you for joining me, for coming over today. I'm sorry I've been so busy, but you know how the house is when the kids are home. They just wanna eat, sleep, Take up your time, more dishes, more laundry. How are they making more laundry when they're not going outside? Well, it's still sunny and hot here in California. Yesterday was 94 degrees. It's a little hot for the scarf. So all you people that are living in states with the cool mornings and maybe a little bit of fog, that would be nice. Send it my way. I need a break in the heat. I'm ready to get the crochet stuff out. Thank you for coming over. I really do enjoy talking to you. Um, tell me what you're working on. I really want to know. I need more ideas. I only have three projects I want to start this week. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.